and we are live. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Nick Webster and Eric Winolda back in the media, back with opinions, with a brand new show called Monday Night Manager. I know it's Saturday today. You'll have to think. <laughs> Come back on Monday for the real review. Eric, we're back. And I tell you what, the world's biggest league, the world's self-proclaimed biggest league has got a story today. Man, I'll tell you, and, and, and it's world news, actually. Um, when, when I wanted to watch this game, my son and I decided that we were just going to go out of the house to watch it. And we were a little bit late. And it was 1-0 when we decided to get in the car. We weren't entirely sure where we were going to go. By the time we sat down, it was 4-0, Nick. We are talking, of course, about Manchester United against Brentford. And it's not a big Brentford. club anymore, is it? It's it, like when we really think about what just happened and what Brentford represents, the small little club with, with you know, uh, some big ideas and and did a fantastic job of getting some great results to stay in the league last year. They Do they have any business winning this game 4-0 against Manchester United? Yes, because Manchester United is not scary anymore. Nobody is scared of them. Nobody – you look at them you see, from, from, a, from a coach's perspective and you look at their lineup and you start picking it apart and saying, here's how we get them. Here's how we can beat them. The confidence of the group. Is, it goes through the roof. Anybody that's playing against Manchester United right now doesn't look at him and say, oh, man, look what we have to deal with. They're saying these are points there for the taking, and they grabbed them, both hands. Great game. Well, look, we've got, we've got to delve into why it's happening. And as they always say, shit rolls downhill. So it starts at the top. So we can compare the Glazers against another team that's done very well American ownership, and that's where we're going, Eric. It's England versus America right here, me and you. I'm saying that the American ownership, from the Glazers' point of view, of Manchester United has been a, to a detriment to the squad. And when we look at what the Henrys have done to Liverpool, it's completely arse about front. You know, my biggest question is, is how much influence do the Glazers have in these actual decisions that have been made? I mean, of which, because they just, they, they're just throwing shit at the wall right now. I mean, if you go back to even uh, Mourinho or or if uh, Louis van Gaal or, or if you just even the original decision, if we really want to be honest about it, when, when Ferguson still had a major influence in, in the club, he he was on the right track. He really was with David Moore, but nobody had time for David Moore. No, everybody wanted to just pick him apart and say, you know, this guy can't do it. But he he was a simpler version of Sir Alex. And did he make some mistakes along the way? Did they have the greatest results? You know, Gunnar Solskjaer. What was he horrible? No, he wasn't. This is a club that is self destructing. It is the is is succumbing to the outside influences and just can't figure itself out. Now, and at the, and, you bring up a great point, though, Eric, about Moyes not given a chance because after Moyes, it was Van Hal, after Van Hal, it was Mourinho, after Mourinho, it was Golosowska, after Solskjaer, it was your German boy. I mean, there's just the, 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 the merry go round of, of managers is just absolutely ridiculous. And, and now we're hearing that Den Haag has to be given time. Well, why didn't they give freaking Moyes some time? Well, because, the, you know, it, this was the first time that, okay, I, I'll put it this way, all right? You, know, you could say this is the first time they've really hit some stormy waters. They hit all kinds of stormy waters with Sir Alex Ferguson. I remember you, you and I were there when they lost 6-1, to one. you know, when, when Jekko put in a few, and it, and it looked like the world was over. But Sir Alex just calmed that storm. He basically he, they threw that in the trash, probably got the hairdryer out, and those boys figured out how to play the next week. What keeps happening to, to, to this group, and it, it'll probably be uh, the case this week, and I thought Gunnar did a pretty good job of handling the, the stormy waters. But the people on the outside start yelling in the modern day, we've got these media outlets or Twitter or Instagram or whatever it is. They have more influence well, than anything that else. The Glazers are listening to, though. I because... think that's what's happening. I think they say, well, this is horrible. This is my team. Somebody stop it. 
and, and we've got to do something. And then they call on the wrong people to fix it. When you look at what, 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 the, Henry, what the Henry group has done, and let's, let's face it, they brought in Klopp, smiley face, whatever, you can call him a complainer or whatever. The reality is, is Klopp lets the other people do their job and they did a damn good job. I, I'm, I'm failing to remember the names. I think some guy named Daniel Ears or something like I can't remember what his name was. But he was the one responsible for, for Liverpool when they were bringing in Andy Carroll. And then they were trying to, 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 to basically say, all right, this is Liverpool. This is who we are. Dalglish, Dag unfortunately, was on the other side of that. They brought in people like Peter Moore, who, who, who saw things on a, on a higher level, on a business level. And Klopp just became the guy who understood that this club needed an identity and needed to pick players that could fit into that identity. And it worked. They also, at the same time, and people forget this, they, I, and, and I don't, I'm, not even, I'm, I'm not even really entirely sure when it exactly started, but, but they were on the forefront of bringing in metrics and statistics and bringing in players that were going to fit their player profile. And it worked. It simply worked. Look at what, what, what Manchester United has done. It's whether it's a uh, it's Latan, whether it's Ronaldo, whether it, it, there's so many or Pogba. There's so many players over the course of the last six to seven cycles, let's call it, who just weren't Manchester United players. Well, they seem to bring in players based on the amount of Instagram followers they have. I mean, right. If it's, and, it's, ridiculous. it's 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 personality signings as opposed to character signings. Exactly. Exactly. So you think James Milner gives a crap at how many people have followed him? No. So, so he's a winner, though, but he, he's a winner. He proved that at City, and he comes over, and he just says, hey, I'm here to work. And he's not going gonna, to gonna be that guy that, that causes problems. He's going to be that guy that puts out fires. And that those are the kind of players that, that Manchester United seemingly just doesn't have. It's well, just why like, isn't oh, Ten Hag going into the transfer oh, market and buying, buying these kind of players? Because right now, he's got the look of dead man walking. I mean, you should have seen the expressions on his face during that game. I mean, he was just like, what is going on here? He, he had no control over the situation. And as a manager and as, as a player, you want to see your manager on the sideline being involved in the game, having some passion for the team. Yes, even if he, if he can't turn a 4-0 around, which I, I get that, but still show that you're out there with the team. And the fact that he's just like, oh... I mean, really, how, how long can you give him? I mean, you can't, you can't say, oh, let's give him two, three years if United keep on losing. This is a team that simply has to win a game. And well, guess and who they get next? Guess who they get next? Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's, I, I, and it's painful. It, it, it's painful to watch. And all right, so let's talk about Ten Hag. Um, it, it's just Louis van Gaal glorified all over again, right? It's, it's. And I'm Dutch, so I get well, to say it's a, it's a less successful Louis van Gaal. I, I, of course, but what my point is, is you know, if you remember some of the some of the preseason matches where him yelling from the sidelines, "What the fuck are you doing?" saying things along that those lines, and everybody said, "Oh yeah, he's getting into him." It doesn't matter how many times you get into a player. If he's shit, he's going to continue to be shit. <laughs> I cannot understand how the hell anybody. Uh, just because you spent a lot of money on, on on Maguire, why the hell is he still out there? There are better options. And if you really want to make a statement now, Ten Hag, you've got to take him out of the fucking team, put him on the bench, and say, watch for a bit. It's the only chance he has at this point. You got you got um, but you got that, but you got Maguire, you got McTominay, you got Fred. I mean, these these McTominay these was players. actually to the to the to to defend the he, for Man United. He the guy put he put something in, but De Gea is throwing the ball in the net. They're all over the place. Here's my point, though. Here's my point, and I and I go back in my memory to some of those Sir Alex Ferguson um, post game interviews, where he took it, he took the hit, he took it like a like he basically said we weren't good enough, and that's on me. And if Tin Hag, what whatever he says right now in his post. Uh, post game press conference will define him. It will define him because if he starts laying blame already and starts doing the Dutch thing, it, it, he is a dead man walking to, to to our graphic here. He is because you can't do that. You can't. 
not at this level. And, and one of the things that, that, that people forget, all, all everybody forgets this. The, look at the smiles on, on Brentford's face. Look at the way their manager handled things last year, even in, a, in, in the loss to Liverpool. It was a tie, actually. But it's a smile. You can tell that those guys enjoy their football. They want to play. Is there any joy whatsoever in Manchester United's unit right now? No. And here's what I would say to this before. I mean, I know I've talked too long already, but look, watch teams after they score. That's a really good indicator of what's going on in that locker room, what's going on in that club. If it's guys running to the sidelines telling people to shut up and, and F off, hey, I'm good. Look at me, look at me, look at me, Rashford. Score a goal so we can actually, but you watch. It's not going to be a smile. It's going to be a relief. That is a team that is not functioning. Now, I always felt that for all his flaws, right, the, the Roy Keens of the world, they brought in, they brought in a, a, a fight. Men, Rosie. characters. But they didn't, they didn't smile a lot, but they were having fun playing. And you saw it after they scored. That's a team that wanted to come together and hug each other. If, if Manchester United scored in that game to make it four to one, they wouldn't know what to do. They wouldn't know what to do. Now they're going to play in the it, Let's say they score a big goal against Liverpool, right? Watch how they react. It'll be anger. It'll be an outlet. It will not be a coming together. Oh, one, of the, one of the most important things about this game is, is understanding how to have fun. You see, I see it a lot in the German divisions as well, where these coaches come in and they come in and say, well, we, we, we mustn't arbeiten, which means we have to work. Yes, it's work. But football is meant to be fun. And if you can't manage or find that balance, you're done. So I, I'm saying, I'm saying this is this is already in my book. Uh, Ten Hag is in big trouble. Ten Hag is in big trouble, but is it the players' fault? I mean, look, Ten Hag's not that out, not that not there on the pitch. He's not the one making these crazy decisions. I mean, yes, he wants a pattern of play, but is he really saying to the players, "Hey, you know, let's chuck it to Christian Eriksen when he's got three players on him"? Is he saying to David De Gea, you know, dive like a sack of potatoes? No. So the players have to take some kind of culpable blame for this. Well, in the modern game, in the modern world, they certainly don't, do they? I know they don't, yeah. They, so only, wait, they only wait for the good moments to tweet out something uh, that, that says, believe in me. Uh, you know, if you look at Maguire's first, uh, at Harry Maguire before the first game, is I can't wait to see Old Trafford. Really? Sure. I mean, that's just your way of saying, don't boo me. Um, th are the players to blame? No, they're not. Players win games. Managers lose them, and referees ruin them. That's the rule of football. you got to understand it. Coaches need to understand that it's their job to prepare their team and to take the hit when they lose and to figure out those ways to communicate to their players that it isn't good enough. Is it the hairdryer? Is it yelling at them all the time? No. Sometimes it's to put an arm around them and take the pressure off. And sometimes some managers take the spotlight and they go into those situations and they make it all about them. And I'm talking about the likes of like Jose Mourinho. He would do that. And his players would say, oh, he's just, that's just Jose being Jose. That's just the way he is. But he did them a service by taking the pressure off. He took it. He made it did something to deflect the storyline or the narrative. Genius at times. To, to, so we wouldn't talk about the fact that we gave the ball away twice. And we don't have to talk. But when he gets inside that locker room and he hears his boys and he, in front of him, he says, guys, this is not good enough. And here's why. And he calls them out. Right. But he doesn't do it in the media. So my point is, if Ten Hag goes at his players today and says this, you know, they're to blame. They you know, obviously they went underneath him. Obviously, we, we weren't prepared on, on, you know, the balls up, up in the air and they scored a crazy goal. Uh, we get caught on a counter. Um, little advice for Ten Hag. We have things to work on. This one's on me. Football's about money, Eric. Last question before we go. Manchester United, one of the world's most valuable clubs. Right now, they've got to be shitting 100 million pounds every time they lose a game. I mean, at what point did the Glazers go, oh, you know, we need to sell. We need to sell now. It's not that they need to sell because, I mean, look at these, you know, people that have that much money and they look at, they, they, they ride the storm and they say, oh, it'll get better. And, and it's, it's, it's worth a lot. And all we have to do is, and what they've done, unfortunately, over the course of the last couple of years is say, well, what do we do? 
What do we do to change things? Let's sign Pogba and let's sell 100,000 jerseys. Well, let's, let's make the money back. It doesn't matter. It's not that bad. I mean, even if we spend 100 million on a player, we'll, we'll make him a famous player or, or it's like a Ronaldo or, or, or Zlatan. And, and, and I, th- I think, honestly, I think when, when Zlatan got there, I thought, all right, this might work. That's the only place Zlatan hasn't won at the highest level. The only place that he didn't win. He we he won the Scudetto last, last year with AC Milan. Did you see his speech? His yeah. speech was brilliant. It was about everybody but him. You finally got to see Zlatan in a locker room, not Zlatan pretending to be God in the media or in, in on Twitter. But my point Are we is- at the point now where United, I mean, look, we see them change managers. We see them change players. I think we're at the point now where we've got to see them change owners. 100%. It's, it's not, do they need to sell? They should sell. They just should. They should give this club to somebody who actually identifies with what the club represents. Once the glue of Sir Alex Ferguson was gone, it was just different. It had a different feel to it. It was everybody trying to get back to what it used to be. And, and they're still chasing that. And I think that was the, the reasoning behind Gunner. I mean, I think they brought him in because he was an extension of Sir Alex. He was endorsed by Sir Alex Ferguson. He was a part of that mentality. I got news for you. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't as, it, until the outside forces started affecting and, and, and digging in. I mean, let's face it. Let's face it. Manchester is not a very big city. It's, it's fairly big, but it's still got that other club, Man City, who puts plants yeah. In there all the time, gets in their locker room and pretends to be wearing red when they're really wearing blue, and they make them say things they don't want to say, cause the kind of turmoil that throws this club completely on its head. And it's not, it's not too hard to figure out. But Sir Alex, Sir Alex figured it out. He he dubbed them the noisy neighbors. He said they're going to do their thing, but we're going to be here. We're going to be inside this bubble. We, as much as we love our fans, we know who they are. But we're going to keep it in the bubble. We're going to make sure that that whether they're going to love us when we win, they're going to hate us when we lose. Great. But we're always going to love each other. And that's how you get results. Sir Alex was a genius. It's just sad to see the club turn into what it's turned into to have, you know, it's under his, his it's on his watch for 20 some odd years. And then you flip it over and now we can't find a manager to, that, that flips the bill. Hey, come back Monday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. No, 6 p.m. Pacific. 9 p.m. Eastern, Eric and I are going to break down the Premier League for you and world football and everything else about football. We love this game. We want to see you. We want to be here. And uh, once I figure out... We'll see you Monday. We got plenty to talk about. It's good to be back, brother. Great to see you.